Okay, we're making our way up this uh, boulder choked wash here in front of me. That's Paul up there, headed to some uh, abandoned mines. And uh, here's some of the scenery here in this wash here in the desert. Pretty nice. Okay, we've been trying to find this abandoned mine, and I think we found it. Um, here is the main portal. And believe it or not, I can feel some air uh, blowing out of there. It took a lot of hunting to find this. It's pretty obscure. So I'm going to stick my head in here. Apparently this does open up, um, but we'll see. But that's where we're headed. Oh, yeah. Huh. Okay, this is just right inside the portal, and there's a tunnel there going off to the left and then a tunnel straight ahead you can see an ore chute down there and then a tunnel here going up and off to the right past that gobbing looks like that kind of goes up to a higher level so we'll check all three of these out we're gonna get down here and maybe check out the one to the left first and then just go from left to right so that's where we're headed right over there So right inside the portal here, that's the tunnel to the right. You can see all that gobbing neatly stacked. And then right by the portal, there's that wooden fence. And then Paul's making entry. It's really low clearance. Um, Got to sort of slide it on your back or stomach. And that's it. That's the entry. Okay, so there's the portal. And I'm going to check out this tunnel here to the left. Um, headed this way. It had some water in here. You can see the uh, cracks in the uh, dirt down here. Must get a little bit of rainwater coming in through that portal. Uh, up here is a, uh, a bat sleeping. And then uh, down here is an ore chute with a number 10 on it. So this left tunnel goes about 100 feet or so. You can see daylight um, up there. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but it, it does exit to uh, daylight. There are a lot of little stopes and things like that up on the hillside here. And I'm not going to go down there. That's too much collapse. But And right here is an ore chute that collapsed. This was the mouth of the chute. And when the ore chute fell away, it left behind the rocks that were in the chute you can and pieces of metal up there that is what that's what a clogged ore chute looks like when the ore chute's been removed really dangerous highly unlikely that that'll give way and fall down but that's what's wedged up in there a lot of boulders and metal here's another shot of that ore chute number 10 and we'll make our way back to the junction and take the center, take the center tunnel. Okay, back at the entry chamber, a portal to our right. There's that gobbing, and then we'll take the center tunnel. I think Paul's already gone down here. Another ore chute. Oh, I feel some airflow. Ore chute number two, I guess. And, uh... That's plugged with debris, which is usually the case. And then uh, looks like another war shoot, number, number three up here, or 13. That's number three. So what we are wondering is, these shoots obviously come down from stopes above us but we don't know how they got to the stopes. There's no ladders here that we can see. There's no way to access the upper stopes from this level. So it really has us puzzled as to how they got up into those stopes unless they went in through the open stopes higher on the hillside here. Some timbers in the overhead. And it looks like the tunnel curves here to the uh, left. Remnants of uh, cross ties for the ore carts. And then here's a tunnel heading off to the right. We'll check that on the way back out. 
But let's keep going this way. Okay, here's another ore chute, number four. A lot of heavy timbering there coming down. Paul's up ahead here, and uh, I saw his footprints in the dirt. But yeah, this is the tunnel, pretty nice. You can stand upright, you don't have to be stooped over, like in some of the mines, and uh, more timbering up here on the right, holding up the uh, overhead. And we'll keep going that way. Okay, so the main tunnel's there, and we came into this chamber that uh, dead ends uh, right here. But right over here is a, about a 40-foot steeply inclined pit. It just there's, there's no tunnels down there. It's just a, it uh, just stops. So we would not want to fall down in there because that would be very difficult to climb out without a rope. And you can see here, look at all the pick marks. This was dug by hand. See that? All, all the uh, scratch marks yeah. from the pickaxes. We haven't really seen any dynamite blasting holes like we normally see in mines. There are, there this are was. Holes up the front. This part was dug by hand. That's amazing. So we're headed that way, but right here to the right is an alcove with just a major section of fractured rock with some like. With some void behind it. That's pretty interesting. Just a fractured, fractured section of the of the rock, and kind of goes up there, and then looks more solid right above us. But we're gonna head this way. It keeps going, so we'll see. We'll see where we end up at. And look how the rock changed color here. Yeah. You can see tan on the bottom there, and then yeah. Uh, yeah. gray. And my voice has reverberations, so we're in real sound rock here. That's a good sign. Yeah, this was a copper mine, we believe, so I don't know. If, do you see signs of copper? Not anymore. Yeah, I don't know. They might be mining something else. Uh, here's the ore cart cross ties. Kind of discarded there on the left. And it looks like it turns here to the left. Paul says it keeps on going. Okay, we're approaching this major intersection right here. Uh, tunnel goes ahead, a little bit of a collapse there, Paul's going over. And then here to the right are some more chutes. Uh, I'm finding more signs of copper here than any other collapse. That looks like that goes off there to the right. There's an arrow uh, on that far timber. We'll have to come back here and check that out. But uh, Paul says it looks like it continues here, and there's more copper in the walls. Oh, yeah, I can see the green copper. Yeah, so here in this chamber right back there, there's a... I'm not sure if that's a big copper deposit right there, because it's got that copper color, or if that's some kind of mold. Uh, it could be a combination of both, but you can see here, yeah, in the overhead, might not be coming out in the video, but you can see the, I guess that's turquoise color of the copper and all over the place. And then uh, behind me here is this ore chute, heavily timbered, and uh, a ladder going right up the mouth of the chute. Never saw that before. Usually the ladders are off to the side. So we'll stick our head up there and see what's up there. Okay, so here's looking at the side of that ore chute. Pretty big timbers there, big chute. And here's the mouth of the chute right here with that ladder uh, in it. And uh, that doesn't go anywhere. It's just totally, totally clogged, so no access there. So we're gonna head back that way and uh, make our way back to take that other branching tunnel. Oh, and by the way, we noticed down here on the timbers for the ore chute, some kind of white mold growing right there on the wood. It's kind of damp in here. Uh, rainwater somehow gets in here and it's the wood here is a little wet and damp so that's what's causing the mold to grow. But let's head back that way. Okay so the portal is that way straight ahead but we're going to take this turn here and uh, 
go past these uh, ore chutes where the tunnel makes a sharp bend to the right. This ore chute has a number six on it, right there at the corner. And I feel some airflow. And we're headed that way. Okay, just came from that way, past that ore chute, and over here to the left, this tunnel ends at a sump. That's just a dead end in there, it goes down, pulls at about five feet, kind of like a pit or a sump, and that's just some minor diggings right there. But the good stuff, follow the red arrow, and uh, is this way. So let's head down this way and check it out. Ah, another ore chute, ore chute number seven. A lot of timbering up here, something majors up here. Head frame over a shaft, maybe. Wow. Definitely looks like a head frame. Wow, look at this. Who would have thought this would have been in here? Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So we just came from that way and we're in this uh, chamber where there's square set timbering. Uh, it's really rare to find this in mines. That's what it looks like. And uh, they call it square set timbering. And what's unique about this square set timbering is up there towards the top, instead of using square cut timbers, they used uh, tree trunks in place of some of the square shaped timbers, like right there. I've never seen that in a mine before where they use tree trunks as part of the square set timbering. Square set timbering like this was used in these large stopes or caverns for support. And you can see how it's all put together. And over here, this is really impressive. The ceiling coming down there, you can see it's angled. Almost looks like a, uh, like a cathedral ceiling. It's, it's actually pretty artistic. You know, it comes down there like a wedge shape and then comes down over there and then somebody drew on that far timber um, with carbide lantern they drew a, a bull's head with horns Okay, here's looking down this vertical shaft here in this square set chamber. You can see down there, we think that's about 50, 60 feet down, there's a wooden platform with a square hole in the center and the ladders continue past that. We're not sure if there's a drift level down there. I'm zooming into it right now. Yeah, zooming, I'm zooming down the ladder. But that, that probably is a drift level, but I don't think we're gonna climb down there. These ladders have some broken rungs, but we'll see. I don't, but you can see there, zooming in, there's the uh, ladders continuing. That, we think it's probably about 100 feet, maybe 150 feet deep. We can't see the bottom, that's for sure. But that's looking way down there. Okay, just came from that way, the square set uh, chamber, and then this side tunnel, uh, there's an incline shaft here going up. And you can see some really rickety ladders up there that we're not going to climb. There's a lot of broken rungs. But that's probably how they get to the stopes that are feeding all the ore chutes on this level. And then behind me, uh, just a dead end back there. So here's that one branching tunnel we skipped over on the way in. So let's go down here and check it out before we make our exit. Hole already up here. So just a dead end up here? Yeah. No, just a dead end drift. Here's a, uh, a dugout here in the overhead. Must have been an ore body there that they were digging out. And then uh, we'll go down here to the end where Paul is.